The subclavian artery is highlighted in this lateral view of the neck. This artery contributes to the blood supply of the neck. Moreover, it gives origin to the second main vessel that supplies the brain, the vertebral artery, which we will describe later in this tutorial. The main bulk of the subclavian artery travels distally into the upper limbs, while giving off branches to the thorax, scapular region, and more. In this tutorial, though, we'll focus on the branches that supply the head and neck. The first arteries arising from each subclavian artery are the left and right vertebral arteries. We can see the right one in this image, highlighted in green. These arteries provide blood to the superior part of the spinal cord, brainstem, cerebellum, and posterior part of the brain. Each vertebral artery originates from the first part of their respective subclavian artery, then courses superiorly through the neck in the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae, as you can see here in this image. They enter the skull, and once at the level of the pons, they merge with each other to form the single midline basilar artery, which we can see here in this image of the brain from an inferior view. The basilar artery then ascends along the ventral surface of the pons. This vertebrobasilar system gives origin to the other arterial circuit, delivering blood to the brain, the posterior circulation of the brain. The basilar artery ends by bifurcating into the paired posterior cerebral arteries, which in turn join the posterior communicating arteries from the internal carotid arteries to complete the circle of Willis. We can see then that this hexagonal arterial network, called the circle of Willis, connects the dual supply of the brain, the anterior circulation that you can see highlighted here, and the posterior circulation, highlighted in blue. Heading back to the subclavian artery, the next branch is the thyrocervical trunk. It has a relatively short course in the anterior portion of the neck and gives off several branches. That's why this arterial trunk has a wide supply territory, including the thyroid and parathyroid glands, larynx and pharynx. The last branch on our list is the costocervical trunk. The costocervical trunk arches posteriorly towards the neck of the first rib. After this short course in the anterior neck, it divides into two terminal branches, through which it supplies structures in the root of the neck, including the posterior neck muscles as well as some in the thorax. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.